A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem. I seek refuge with Allah Almighty from Satan the Rejected One. Bismillah, Hir Rahman Rahim, by the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Sallallahu Ta'ala Ala Habibihi, Muhammadiyum Wa Alihi Wasallam. Assalamu Alaikum and welcome to our segment on Surah Al Araf. Inshallah, today we will cover the 16th Ruku of Surah Al Araf. Verses 130 to 141. The previous ruku ended on the fact that Pharaoh began to persecute and oppress the Israelites, upon which Prophet Musa salam, urged his people to seek support from Allah with the utmost patience. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the true meanings of the Quran by the grace of his Prophet Muhammad. Amin. With this dua, let's begin the 16th ruku of Surah Al-Araf. Bismillah ma'an rahim verse 130. وَلَقَدْ أَخَذْنَا أَلَا فِرَوْنَ لَأَلَّهُمْ يَزَّقَّرُونَ And we certainly seized the people of Pharaoh with years of famine and deficiency in fruits that perhaps they would be reminded. Bayasinina means with years of famine. The root of this word is seen noon and well. And the meaning of it is to is to revolve around something. Just as one revolution of the earth around the sun is equal to one year. Naksin means deficiency, a defect, or loss. Due to Pharaoh's continuous transgression and denial of the truth, his people were made to suffer from famine. According to the divine law of Allah, they were not destroyed right away. They were given respite, so they can change their ways and start acting wisely. Famine was to warn them of their actions, so they can repent and come out of the darkness. Let's go on to verse 131. <laughs> But when came to them good, they said, This is for us. And if afflicted them bad, they ascribed evil omen to Moses and those with him. Unquestionably, their evil omens are with Allah. But most of them do not know. Lana hadihi means this is for us. Yet the yaru means they ascribe evil omen. The a'iruhu means their evil omen. Both of these words have the root ta, ya, and ra, which means evil omen. Pharaoh and his people boldly and shamelessly attributed the good things to themselves and the bad things to Prophet Musa salam and his people. In this verse, Allah's divine law has been explained. In that, the hardships that come upon any nation or any one are actually due to their own misdeeds. Let's go on to verse 132. And they said, Whatever you bring us therewith of a sign to bewitch us, we will not be believers in you. Mahma means whatever. Pharaoh and his people showed arrogance and said to Prophet Musa salam that whatever sign he showed to them, even if he were to cast a spell, they still would not believe in the signs or obey him. Let's go on to verse 133. 
alayhimut tufana wal jarada wal kumala wadad the fadia wadad tama ayatim mufassalatin fastakbaru wakanu kaumam mujamin so we sent upon them the flood and the locusts and the lice and the frogs and the blood as distinct signs but they showed arrogance and were a criminal people wa al kumala means lice or vermin the root of this word is qaf mim and lam and the meaning of this root denote, denotes contempt and humiliation feeling that a person is despicable and causes problems for the society according to the divine laws of allah the hardships were increased on the people of pharaoh because of their continued disobedience and denial of the signs allah sent upon them floods that caused widespread destruction he sent locusts that wiped out the crops as a result of the flood storms the land became wet and the climate became very humid which led to an abundance of insects and frogs various blood diseases broke out that made their lives miserable let's go on to verse 134 wa lamma waqa'a alayhim rijzu qalu ya musa ulana rabbaka bima ahida indaka la'in kashafta anna rijza lanu minanna laka wa lanursilana ma'aka bani israil and when the punishment descended upon them they said o moses invoke for us your lord by what he has promised you if you remove the punishment from us we will surely believe you and we will send with you the children of israel kashafta means you remove whenever a punishment came upon pharaoh and his people they would plead to prophet musa alayhi salam to ask him to pray to his lord to remove the punishment and then they would make promises that if the hardships go away they would become believers and allow the israelites to go with him let's go on to verses 135 and 136 falamma kashafna anhum ar-rijsa ila ajal hum balaghu idha hum yankusun but when we remove the punishment from them until a term which they were to reach then they broke their word fa anta kamna minhum fa agharaknahum fil yammi bi annahum kazzabu bi ayatina wa kanu anha ghafilin so we took retribution from them and we drowned them in the sea because they denied our signs and were heedless of them balaghu means were to reach yankushun means broke al yammi means the sea when the punishment was removed and the hardships were no more pharaoh and his people did not adhere accordingly to their terms and broke the promises they made unfortunately this is happening today as well We see leaders of various countries that don't keep their promises once they get elected. We see heads of large organizations and institutions that don't fulfill their contracts with their clients and treat their employees poorly. We see workers strike and protest against illegal restrictions who are promised what they demand once they return. But when they come back to work, the upper management doesn't follow through. This is what we see outside. but we need to look inside as well and ask ourselves if we also break promises that we make and not follow through on our word pharaoh repeatedly broke his promises and continued to deny the signs so by the order of allah prophet musa alayhi salam took the israelites with him and left pharaoh and his people when pharaoh came to know this he went after prophet musa alayhi salam with his army by Allah's orders and under the leadership of Prophet Musa alayhi salam 
His people were guided to cross through the water barrier known as the Strait of the Red Sea. They reached across safely while Pharaoh and his army were drowned. Let's go on to verse 137. وَأَوْ رَسْنَ الْقَوْمَ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يُسْتَذَفُونَ مَشَارِكَ الْأَرْضِ وَمَغَارِ بَهَلَّاتِ بَرَكْنَا فِيهَا وَتَمَّتْ قَالِمَاتُ رَبِّكَ الْحُسْنَ أَلَى بَانِ إِسْرَائِيلَ بِمَا سَبَلْ وَدَمَرْنَا مَكَانَ يَسْنَعُ فِرَوْنُ وَقَوْمُهُ وَمَا كَانُ Yarishun. And we cause the people who had been oppressed to inherit the eastern regions of the land and the western of it, which we had blessed. And the good word of your Lord was fulfilled for the children of Israel, because of what they had patiently endured. And we destroyed what Pharaoh and his people were producing and the establishment of their throne. Masharaki means eastern, wa magare baha means western of it, wa dhammarna means and we destroyed, yarishuna means their throne. After Pharaoh and his army were drowned, the whole kingdom was made the heir of the Israelites, who had been oppressed in the same land before. And this is mentioned in Surah al Shuara, verses 57 to 59. In the last bit of this verse, we see, Yasna'u fir'aunu wa qawmuhu wa ma kanu yarishun. This refers to the class division that Pharaoh had created in the society. The Israelites, or Bani Israel, as a nation, were oppressed and subjugated. But Garun, who belonged to the Bani Israel, was favored simply because he was an assistant to Pharaoh, who aided in exploiting the Bani Israel. So when the Israelites took over, this brought an end to their caste-based government. Let's go on to verses 138 and 139. Wa Bani Ala asnamin lahum. Kalu ya Musa. Ajalana. Ilahan kama lahum. Aliha. Kala innakum kaumun tajhalun. And we took the children of Israel across the sea. When they came upon a people devoted to idols of theirs, they said, O Moses, make for us a god, just as they have gods. He said, Indeed, you are a people behaving ignorantly. Inna haulai mutabbarum mahum fihi wa batilum makanu yamalu. Indeed, these will be destroyed, which they are engaged in, and worthless is whatever they are doing. Yakufuna means devoted. Mutabbarun means destroyed. When Prophet Musa salam, was taking his people across the Strait of the Red Sea, he passed by a town where the people were bowing before the idols in worship. When the Israelites saw this, they requested that Prophet Musa salam, make them idols, just like the ones they saw, so they can worship them like those people were doing. Even though the Israelites were now under the leadership of Prophet Musa salam, and were well aware of not following polytheism and idolatry, they could not control their ignorant demands because they had been doing it for centuries before. So Prophet Musa salam, patiently reminded them that they were behaving ignorantly and what these people were worshipping will eventually be destroyed and whatever they were engaged in was completely useless and of no benefit to them. Let's go on to verses 140 and 141. Qala aghayra lahi abliqum ilahan wa huwa alal alamin. He said, 
Is it other than Allah I should desire for you as a God? Well, he has preferred you over the worlds. What is anjaynakum bin Ali Fir'auna? Yasumu nakum su al adhar. Yukatiluna abnaakum. Wa yas tahyuna nisaakum. Wa fi thalikum balaum mir rabbikum adhim. And when we saved you from the people of Pharaoh, afflicting you with the worst torment, killing your sons, and letting live your women. And in that was a great trial from your Lord. Prophet Musa salam, then told the Israelites that they were the people preferred over all of the worlds by Allah, who showered his mercy upon them and brought them out of darkness into the light. So how could Prophet Musa salam, want them to worship anyone or anything else besides Allah? He then reminded them of their oppression under Pharaoh's rule, who tortured them in the worst possible way by killing all opportunities for them to prosper or gain power and continuing to persecute and oppress them. And this was a great test of their patience and perseverance. This concludes our segment on Ruku 16 of Surah Al-Araf. Let's briefly go over what we discussed. Punishments came one after the other on Pharaoh and his people. Whenever the punishment came, Pharaoh would request Prophet Musa salam, to pray to his Lord that if the punishment was removed, he would allow the children of Israel to go with Prophet Musa salam. But whenever the punishment was removed, Pharaoh would break his promise. He attributed any ease he found to himself and any trouble or misfortune to Prophet Musa salam. So, by the order of Allah, Prophet Musa salam, took the Israelites and left. But Pharaoh followed them with his army. Allah, the most merciful, brought Prophet Musa salam, and his people safely across the Strait of the Red Sea, while Pharaoh and his army were drowned. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the Holy Quran and its true meanings in light of the life and guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Amin. Thank you for joining us for this segment. Until next time. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah speaks the truth, the exalted, the great. Sallallahu taala ala habibihi Muhammadiyu wa alihi wasallam.